It's really, really stormy outside today because it is so stormy outside and I really feel like having a a nice warm heart, hearty meal and I have my little cup and I have some tea and the wind is blowing outside, you could probably hear that. It is also raining as well. Let's pour some tea. outside. It's a cup of um, English breakfast tea. Handmade mug. Not by me this time. Anyway, let's uh, put this to one side and have a look at this gorgeous book. It's a quite an old book, but it's good housekeeping. I think it was quite funny because it's this book's only four ninety nine, and it's family meals for a fiver. <laughs> it has good housekeeping. Over two hundred and fifty tried and tested recipes and ideas for budget meals and cooking with leftovers. So that is what I like to do. I like to use up my leftovers if I can. Plenty of things I've marked off in here. Let's see if I can find the date of when this book was published. As though it's the last date in here is 2009. Notes. Both metric, metric and imperial measures are given for the recipes. Follow either set of measurements, not a mixture of both, as they are not interchangeable. All spoon measures are level. One, tea, one teaspoon equals five meal spoon and one table tablespoon equals 15 meal spoon. Ovens and grills must be preheated to a specified temperature. Use sea salt and freshly ground black pepper unless otherwise suggested. Fresh herbs should be used unless dried herbs are specified in the recipe. Medium eggs should be used except where otherwise specified. Free range eggs are recommended. Note that certain recipes, including mayonnaise, lemon curd, and some cold desserts, contain raw or lightly cooked eggs. The young, elderly, pregnant women, and anyone with an immune deficiency disease should avoid these because of the slight risk of salmon, salmonella. Calorie, fat, and carbohydrate counts per servings are provided for the recipes. If you are following a gluten or dairy free diet, check the labels on all pre packaged food goods. Recipe serving suggestions 
do not take gluten or dairy-free diets into account. GF equals gluten-free, DF equals dairy-free, and V equals vegetarian. And then that's all the picture credits there. So let's have a look at the four word. Shall I read it? Let's let's read it. Here at Good Morning Good Morning. <laughs> yeah, it is good morning. Here at Good Housekeeping, we always say that the test of a good cookbook is how often you turn to it for inspiration and how messy the pages are. <laughs> we know this book book packed with information for the busy woman will be used many times and of course is timely and is timely thrift thrift is the order of the day now and family meals for a fiver is packed with clever ways to save you time and money and help you budget your family meals from the hundreds of reader letters and queries we receive every month. It's clear that cooking supper for, from scratch every night can be a challenge. To help you, we've come up with the ultimate store cupboard stocked with basic ingredients, so you'll always have the makings of a meal. We've also highlighted some extra items that are really good to keep in. These products might cost slightly more, except extra virgin oil, for instance, or a small tub of dried progetti mushrooms, but the return in favour will be worth it, plus there are handy habits to adapt while shopping and, and key notes on avoiding waste. Sometimes we would all take something we should all take note of. Flick to the recipe collection and you'll see we've gathered together a handful of classics and thrown in some new favourites too. All of the recipes have been triple tested in the Good Housekeeping Institute Cookery Kitchen kitchens to make sure they're foolproof and work every time for you. Enjoy. And that was Emma Marsden. She's the cookery editor of Good Housekeeping. So here we got information on get thrifty for old fashioned cooking, uh, five ways to get thrifty, eating a balanced diet, pack lunches, soup, bread, pizza, uh, biscuits and cakes and family uh, Friday night takeaway. <laughs> okay, we do family night takeaway sometimes, we do it on a Saturday. but. So let's have a little look at this. Um, do we just read? I don't want to read it all for you because look, there's lots and lots of things, but you can certainly have a glance at it. They so, say, Friday night takeaway. Takeaways are a welcome treat if you're tired after a long week, but they are expensive and often contain. <laughs> Lots of unnecessary fat. I regret reading this. Salt or sugar. Make your own takeaway alternative and it will not only save you money but also taste fantastic and won't take long to cook either. By the time you've ordered a meal from the local shop and picked it up or had it delivered, you could have whipped up one of these recipes yourself and save money. Chicken stir fry with noodles. Spiced tikka kiabs. Kiabs? Kiabs? Kiabs, <laughs> chicken, <laughs> tan tandoori burgers, prawn and vegetable stir fry, quick fish and chips. Yes, but you have to still have to take time in doing those. You're, you're just too tired to do anything. <laughs> We've got here we've got get organized I have another book actually that I must take out with all the stuff that you put in a store cupboard and I have especially when I was a student and when I was first 
living after being a student that was like the first proper house I had or first proper flat I um, followed the store cupboard thing and it was it was very useful and then rules of storage store cups store cupboard recipes tip, thrifty tip it's cheaper to grow herbs on your windowsill or pots in the garden some like rosemary, bay, thyme and sage are hardy and can be snipped during the winter. Tender herbs such as parsley, coriander, basil and chives are happy on a sunny windowsill or grow in pots outside during the summer. Yeah, true. We do do that sometimes. They usually die though quite quickly, which is annoying. Fridge list, fresh produce, celery, garlic, onions, carrots and lemons. I don't recommend putting carrots in the fridge really they usually grow white mold and dairy produce cheese eggs buttermilk meats vacuum packed salami and ham stock in the fridge how to store food fridge storage times it's quite useful I don't think along how long things last freezer look let's look homemade stock frozen vegetables uh, pastry, bags of frozen fruit, and sliced bread. We actually keep our bread in the fridge. But th I know that says uh, sliced bread can be toasted from frozen, used to make homemade breadcrumbs. And we go on how to shop choosing beef, choosing pork, choosing lamb, choosing fish and seafood, choosing chicken, choosing fruit and vegetables. So forth and keys and so what's in season at the moment in is asparagus, broccoli, Jersey Royal potatoes, purple sprouting broccoli, which is rhubarb, rocket, spinach, spring onions, watercress, fruit, bananas, kiwi fruit, uh, cockles, cod, salmon and sea trout. And that's in the UK. It might be different from where you are. And we're also behind uh, in season so we're probably even though it's April it's probably more March um, cauliflower kale leeks purple sprouting broccoli rhubarb spring onions fruit bananas blood oranges kiwi fruit lemons oranges passion fruit pineapple pomegranate fish cockles cod haddock I'm sorry hake lemon sole mussels salmon and sea trout you wouldn't have thought that lemons and oranges would be in season, would they? Well, they're certainly not local. Like, we can get strawberries now. Um, and they're from Spain, so... And then you've got lovely a week's menu and shopping list. What you can use from the store cupboard. Using leftovers, turkey and chestnut soup, bubble and squeak cake, bits and bobs. You may not or may not always feel like transforming your leftovers into meals, as there may not be enough to do so. Another option is to freeze the odd ingredients for later use. A small amount of herbs, fresh fr frozen ice cube trays, one or two chilies, these frozen well easily be chopped up when from frozen double cream lightly whip the cream and then freeze hard cheeses they will uh, become crumbly once thawed but can be used for grating or in cooking bread whiz in a food processor to make bread crumbs these freeze well in a sealed plastic bag used to sprinkle over bakes for a crispy topping coat fish or chicken before frying grilling or baking or use the bread or use for bread sauce to serve with game or turkey cube stale bread toss with olive oil and spread out on a baking sheet bake at 200 centigrade the 180 centigrade fan oven mark six or for five to ten minutes until garden uses croissants for salads and soups half used pack of olives Use in a salad or heat with an onion and a tin of tomatoes and serve with pasta. If you like olives, I don't think I would have a half packet of olives because I don't like olives. Yeah. 
So we're going to go on with simple dressings and sauces and then we're going to go on um, jointing a whole chicken and making stock, chicken stock. It's probably something I'm going to be making soon. So I need 1.6 kilograms of chicken bones or a stripped roast chicken carcass, chip, tick. Um, onions and celery sliced, don't have any celery. Chopped leeks, don't have any leeks at the moment either. Uh, bay leaves and a few thyme sprigs and a small punch of parsley, tick. Black peppercorns and a bit of salt. Put all the ingredients into a large pan with three litres, that's five and a quarter pints cold water. Bring slowly to the boil and skim the surface. Partly cover the cover and simmer gently for two hours, skimming away the surface of fat regularly. Adjust the seasoning if necessary. Strain through a muslin muslin lind muslin lind <laughs> lined sieve into a bowl and cool quickly. Uh, de grease before using C opposite. Oh, degreasing stock, okay. Meat and poultry stock needs to be just degreased. Vegetable stock does not. You can mop the fat from the surface using a kitchen paper, but the following messages are easier and more effective. There are three main methods that can use that you can use. Ladling, chilling and pouring. While the stock is warm, place a ladle on the surface, press down to allow the fat floating on the surface to trickle over the edge until the ladle is full. Guard the fat, then repeat until all the fat has been removed. Two, this technique works best with a stock made from meat, whereas fat solidifies when cold. Stock in the fridge until the fat becomes solid, pieces of fat using a slotted spoon. For this you'll need a decreasing jug or a double pouring gravy boat which has the spout at the base of the vessel. When you pour the stock when you pour the stock comes out while the fat stays behind the jug. Huh. Now look out for one of those. Yeah. Find one of those. I don't think I've ever seen one. So making soups. So I think that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to make a chicken stock and then make a chicken soup maybe, because I've got some chicken pieces I would like to do as well. Gosh, this is very in depth in this book. Making short crust, pa so making short crust pastry, making cakes, making biscuits, bread basics, making pizza. Yeah, soups and salads. Uh, Cream of chicken soup. Okay, so we've got cream of chicken soup, um, which I think I'm going to make today. It serves for preparation time is 10 minutes, cooking time is 35 minutes, and then there's national information per serving. So three tablespoons of plain flour, 150 ml or one fourth of a pint of milk. 1.1 litres or 2 pints of chicken stock, 125 grams or 4 ounces of cooked chicken diced, 1 tablespoon, I'm sorry, 1 teaspoon of lemon juice, pinch of freshly grated nutmeg, I'm actually going to use a uh, packet nutmeg, One, um, 2 tablespoons of single cream, I don't think I've got any lactose-free cream. I have to miss out on that. I don't know what. Maybe we have some. Maybe have some soya cream I can use. Salt and ground black pepper, croutons and parsley sprigs to garnish. I have some croutons and we have some parsley sprigs. But that's nice. In a large bowl. In a large bowl, blend the flour with a little of the milk until it makes a smooth cream. Bring the stock to the boil, then stir into the in 
to the blended mixture. Return to the pan and simmer gently for 20 minutes. Stir in the chicken, lemon juice, nutmeg and salt and pepper to taste. Mix the rest of the milk with the cream and stir in. Reheat without boiling. Taste and adjust the seasoning. Then pour into four warmed super bowls. Sprinkle with croutons and parsley sprigs and serve. It says here to try something different. Swap the chicken for equal amounts of cooked turkey. But I'm definitely going to be using the chicken because we have some chicken left over. And I have a lovely, some lovely chicken stock too. So that's definitely the one I'm going to be making. Do we have a, we have a little... So I know that's the recipe you want to make. What else have we got in here? We did the leek and potato soup. That's really nice. I've done that before. The other ones I listed was hearty chicken soup with dumplings. Um, another one I was interested in making were two tablespoons of olive oil and two celery sticks roughly chopped. It's the celery I don't have at the moment. 150 grams of carrots, roughly chopped. 150 grams of waxy salad potatoes, thinly sliced. Uh, 275 grams of chicken breast, thinly sliced. 2 litres of hot chicken stock. 100 grams of plain flour. Half a teaspoon of baking powder. And one medium egg, well beaten. 25 grams of butter melted and a splash of milk, 75 grams of frozen peas, salt and ground black pepper, handful of chives roughly chopped to garnish. Heat the oil in a large pan and add the celery, carrots and potatoes. Cook for 5 minutes or until the vegetables are being uh, beginning to caramelise around the edges. Add the chicken and fry for three minutes until just starting to turn golden. Pour in the hot stock and simmer for 15 minutes, skimming the surface occasionally to remove any scum. To make the dumplings, sift the flour, baking powder and half a teaspoon of salt into a bowl. Season with black pepper, combine the egg, melted butter and milk into a separate bowl then stir quickly into the flour to make a stiff batter. Drop half teaspoonfuls of dumpling mixture into the soup, then cover and simmer for further 15 minutes. Stir in the peas and heat thoroughly. Serve garnished with chives. <gasps> that sound divine. So that's not what I'm going to make today, but that is another nice one. I'll look current chicken and coriander soup that's one of my favorites too quick winter min minestrone full of goodness broth definitely going to be coming back to this soup this soup coming back to this book soon cheese coleslaw with roast chicken smoked mackerel salad smoked mackerel mackerel citrus salad warm bacon salad. I've tried that before, that's nice. Warm lentil and egg salad. Tomato and mozzarella pasta salad. Greek pasta salad. Bacon and egg salad. Easy chicken salad. Chicken Caesar salad. Orange chicken salad. I've only got meat dishes. what I picked up are the chicken with wine and capers or the chicken and leek pie it was probably the chicken and leek pie because I'm not very sure on the capers so let's have a read of this then we've got five large potatoes peeled and chopped with, into chunks 200 grams of creme fraiche and three chicken breasts with skin with skin about 125 grams each. Three large leeks trimmed and chopped into chunks. About 10 fresh 
tarragon leaves, finely chopped, salt, and ground black pepper. <clears throat> preheat the oven to 200 grams, uh, preheat the oven to 200 centigrade, 180 centigrade fan oven, mark six. Put the potatoes into a pan of lightly salted cold water, cover, bring to the boil and simmer for 10 to 12 minutes until soft. Drain and put back into the pan. Add one tablespoon of creme fraiche seasoning with salt and mash well. I want a, a potato masher and I was going to buy one from England but I didn't in the end. I haven't seen them in Denmark. I know you can get them but I haven't seen them very widely available. Okay, number two. Meanwhile, heat a frying pan, add the chicken, skin side down. And fry gently for five minutes or until the skin is golden. Turn the chicken over and fry for six to eight minutes. Remove the chicken from the pan and put onto a board. Tip the leeks into the pan and cook in the juices over a low heat for five minutes to soften. Three, discard the chicken skin and cut the flesh into bite-sized pieces. Don't worry if it's not quite cooked. So... Put the chicken back into the pan. Stir in the remaining creme fraiche and heat for two to three minutes until bubbling. Stir tarragon season with salt and pepper. Then spoon into a 1.7 litre, which is three pint of improved dish. Spread the mash on top and cook in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes until garden and heated through. Serve hot. Just says serve hot. So yeah, there's another one there. I don't think there's any more in this book, but there's plenty of recipes, and I'm certainly going to have another dig into here, like pork chops with fresh ginger and apple. That sounds nice. I am going to be cooking a roast lamb at Easter, so maybe if we have a roast lamb with orange, look, it has garlic in it. That might be something I want to look at. So I'll mark that one as well. Should we read it? Let's read it now because this is not too far away. Very long video we got here, but I like long videos, don't you? Uh, so roast lamb with orange. Preparation time 20 minutes. Cooking time an hour and 25 minutes. Plus resting. Grated zest and juice of one orange, plus extra wedges to garnish. Two garlic cloves sliced, two large fresh rosemary sprigs, leaves separated. One te teaspoon full of olive oil. Was that a tablespoon? Yeah, one tablespoon of olive oil and 1.5 kilograms of leg of lamb or three pounds. Three tablespoons of orange marmalade. One tablespoon of plain flour salt and ground black pepper, roasted vegetables to serve. Preheat the oven to 180 centigrade, 160 centigrade fan oven, mark six. In a bowl, mix together the orange zest, garlic and leaves from two rosemary sprigs and the oil. Season with salt and pepper. Put the lamb on a board and mix several slits all over it. Stuff the mixture into the slits. Put the lamb on the rack in a roasting tin and roast for one, uh, one and a quarter hours, basting with juices from time to time. I don't know what basting is. It's basically pouring the juices on from the pan onto the meat. About 10 to 15 minutes before the end of the cooking time, brush the lamb with the marmalade. Insert a few rosemary leaves into each slit into the meat. Remove the lamb from the oven, wrap loosely in foil and leave to rest for 10 to 15 minutes. Put the roasting tin on the hob, skim off and discard the fat and stir in the flour. Add 150ml, half, uh, one fourth of a pint water and the orange juice and bring to the boil. Then simmer, stirring occasionally for 8 minutes or until thick. Season. Carve the lamb and serve with gravy and vegetables. 
garnish with orange wedges. That sounds really nice. Try something different. Roast lamb with lemon and thyme. Use lemon zest. Use lemon zest and juice instead of orange. Replace the rosemary with one to four large fresh thyme sprigs. I think I like the rosemary lamb with lamb sounds really nice. So that's the rosemary with orange. Can probably do that. Like pork and apple sauce. And I like it because it's got the what you can do with the leftovers if there is any leftovers. Fish. Not having fish today. Scrambled eggs with smoked salmon. Gosh, that sounds nice. Quick fish and chips. I'm definitely coming back to this book. I know I keep saying that, but I'm gonna do another recipe from here. It's funny how you had these books for such a long time, and then like you find them again in the cupboard, and you know why you've kept them because they have some beautiful recipes inside them, like puddings. <laughs> Rice, rice pudding. Gosh. I think a British favourite. Uh, batter to grease. One so one twenty five grams of short grain pudding rice. One point one liters of full fat milk. One tablespoon of golden caster sugar. Grated zest. One small orange. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract and a whole nutmeg to grate. Just use nutmeg, I could. But yeah, it's, the pudding rice is not always so easy to get hold of. We can get it in Denmark though, so that's nice. Preheat the oven to 180 centigrade. Mark for lightly butter a 900 ml, one half and a pint oven proof dish. Add the rice, milk, sugar, orange zest, and a vanilla extract and stir. And stir everything together. Grate a little nutmeg all over the top of the mixture. Bake the pudding in the oven for one and a half, one and a half hours or until the top is golden brown. And serve. It beats rice pudding in a, in a tin, doesn't it, really? Saucy hot lemon pudding. Express tart, apple tart. Wouldn't it be nice to like have a winter gathering or where we like gather in, in the, some big house, bake some of these yummy desserts or meals and bring them together and like have, we could have a, like a little coo and then we could like share each other's food. I think that would be nice. We could do that sometime to do that. Pear and blackberry crumble. That sounds delicious. Bread and butter pudding. That's another home comfort. Food, um, hearted uh, puddings, aren't they? Oh, the meringue pie and steamed syrup sponge pudding. Oh my gosh, making me very, very hungry. Cheats chocolate pots. <laughs> okay, let's look at this quickly. 500 a carton fresh custard. I suppose you could make your own. 200 grams of plain chocolate or at least 50% cocoa solids broken into pieces. Put the custard in a small pan with the chocolate. Heat. So it's basically chocolate custard. Heat gently, stirring all the time until the chocolate has melted. Pour the mixture into four small coffee cups and chill in the fridge for 30 minutes to an hour before serving. <laughs> A rustic blackberry and apple pie. This looks nice autumn pie. American style plum blah. Cinnamon pancakes, toffee cheesecake, treacle tart, lemon and passion fruit fall. Banoffee pie, pecan pie. Gosh. And now basic bakes. So you've got your muffins, honey cupcakes. 
chocolate van Victoria sandwich, chocolate chip cakes, quick chocolate slices. How quick are they? Cooking time two minutes. What? Okay. I have. Well, let's let's come back to that then. We'll come back to those. <gasps> chocolate fudge salt bread. I love yummy and hazelnut chocolate flakes, peanut and raisin cookies, apricot and hazelnut bread, and there's the index. Okay, let's go back. I think that's the index. Yeah. Look, and let's get to this. There's some temperature and measurement, so I'll hold that there if you want to take a picture of that. I might help you. Let's go back and read the quick chocolate slices. I need some tea. Uh, I don't think there's a, there's a new one here. I've got a new one. New one. This one is um, uh, vanilla, vanilla red brush tea. It's uh, caffeine free. I've got my tea. Let's read this then. The quick chocolate slices. So you need. Um, Oh, that smells nice. You need uh, 225 grams of butter or olive oil spread, 50 grams of cocoa sifted, 3 tablespoons of golden syrup, 300 grams of packed digestive biscuits crushed, okay so it's like a cheesecake type, okay, 400 grams of plain chocolate, at least 70% cocoa solids broken into pieces, my tea is too hot to hold, so I'm going to have to hold it by the handle. Put the batter or olive oil spread into a heatproof bowl. Add the cocoa and golden syrup and melt over a pan of gently of gently shimmer, simmering, simmering water. Mix everything together. Remove from the heat and stir in the biscuits. Mix well until thoroughly cooled in chocolate, thoroughly coated in chocolate, crushing crushing down any large pieces of biscuit. Turn into a greased 25.5 times 16.5 centimeters or 10 by six and a half inches tin. Cool, cover and chill for 20 minutes. Melt the chocolate in a heat proof bowl in a 900 watt microwave on full power for one minute 40 seconds. Stirring twice. Alternatively, melt over a pan of gently simmering water. Stir once more and pour over the chocolate biscuit base. Then chill for 20 minutes. Cut in half lengthways. Cut each half into 20 rectangular fingers. <gasps> yum, yum. But there's plenty of lovely surprises in there. So yeah, that was the Good Housekeeping Institute tried and tested book of food and drink. Mm. That's a lovely cup of vanilla tea. I'm certainly going to try out the chicken soup today. And I'll pop in a little picture of what that turns out like but uh, anyway I hope you enjoy this I hope you have a great day take care for now stay safe bye bye